This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Chip in Tampa, Florida, on January 7th, 2006. The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this, and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember. It was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow from my books surcease of sorrow. Sorrow for the lost Lenore, for that rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore. Nameless here forevermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. This it is, and nothing more." Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. "'Sir,' said I, "'or, madam, truly your forgiveness I implore, but the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that scarce was sure I heard you here. I opened wide the door." Darkness there and nothing more. Deep into the darkness, peering long, I stood there, wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming. Dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before, but the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore, this I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this, and nothing more. Back into my chamber, turning all my soul within me, burning soon again. I heard a tapping, something louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see what thereat is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind, and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, when, with many a flirt and flutter in there, stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mane of lord or lady, perched upon my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace, just above my chamber door, perched, and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird, beguiling my sad fancy into smiling by the grave and the stern decorum of the countenance it wore, Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I'd said, art sure no craven, ghastly, grim, and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's Plutonian shore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Much I marvelled this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore, for we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast upon the sculpted bust above his chamber door, with such name as nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on that placid bust, spoke only that one word as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing further than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before, on the morrow he will leave me as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, Nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken, 
Doubtless, said I, what it utters is its only stock and store, cut from some unhappy master, whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster, till his songs one burden bore, to the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore of never, never more. But the raven, still beguiling all my sad soul into smiling straight, I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of bird and bust and door. Then upon the velvet sinking I betook myself to linking fancy unto fancy, thinking that this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt and ominous bird of yore meant in croaking nevermore. Thus I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl, whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease, reclining on the cushion's velvet lining that the lamplight gloated o'er. But whose velvet violet lining with the lamplight gloating o'er she shall press? Ah, nevermore. Then methought the air grew denser, Perfumed from an unseen censer Swung by seraphim, Whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch! I cried. Thy God hath lent thee by these angels He has sent thee respite, Respite and nepenthe from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, O oh, quaff this kind nepenthe, And forget the lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil. Prophet still, if bird or devil, whether tempter sent or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate, yet all undaunted on this desert land, enchanted on this home by horror haunted, tell me, truly I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within that distant Aden it shall clasp a sainted maiden, whom the angels name Lenore, clasp a rare and radiant maiden, whom the angels name Lenore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked up starting. Get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul has spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust from off my door. Take thy beak from out my heart, and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting on the pallid bust of Pallas just above my chamber door, and his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming, and the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor, and my soul. From out that shadow that lies floating on the floor Shall be lifted Nevermore.